and almost live from room 115, it's Miss Sunogo! Today we're going to do a read aloud and the book is called The Cool Bean by Jory John and Pete Oswald. The Cool Bean. Watch out! Here come the cool beans. The Cool Beans. Oh yeah, check out how they move. Look at the way they swagger. Notice their sunglasses. Meow! The cool beans are known all over school. From house to house, across town, beyond county lines. In the olden days last year, we were all one big pot of beans. We were a mixed bag, but somehow it worked. Yep, those were the good old days. And then we stop seeing each other as much. That's just how it is sometimes. You spend less time together, even though you're not totally sure why. I watched as the beans I knew so well, the beans from my own pod, became the cool beans. Oh, they were so cool. One of them could play the guitar cool. One of them could draw the best superheroes. Cool. One of them could jump higher than any bean I'd ever known. Cool. Me? Well, I mostly stayed the same. Sure, I made some small changes. I wore sunglasses. Too big. I slicked my hair back. Too slick. I strutted around. Ow. I swaggered. Oof. I was still picked last for everything. My clothes never seemed to fit. I snorted when I laughed. Honk. I walked into stuff. I was an uncool bean for sure. I started thinking of myself as just a common being with no special skills. I couldn't compete, so I didn't even try. I'd never be a cool bean. It seemed like there were two types of beans in the world. They were the cool beans and the beans like me. The days all blended together. I lived my life and things were just okay. I took tests and ate lunches and mostly kept to myself. The cool beans continued being cool. I mean, sure, I miss them a bit. But it's not like I was going to say anything. I felt like all that coolness had gotten in the way of our friendship. And that's how it went until one day. I was in the cafeteria. I dropped my lunch on my loafers. Oh no, not again. But then something sort of miraculous happened. Out of nowhere, one of the cool beans helped me clean it up. He didn't even say anything. Me a nod. That was it. Later, I was out on the playground. I tripped and scraped my knee and maybe cried a little bit, and everybody saw it. Another one of the cool beans came to my side and, without a word, dusted me off. That afternoon, I was sitting in class. I wasn't really paying attention. I didn't notice, but our teacher had called on me. Everybody stared. I sat there in silence. Nobody said anything. And then, then everybody just laughed at me. That was it. 
After today, I was officially a has-been. But then one of the cool kids stood up and came over to me. Everybody watched. She leaned in close and whispered, Hey, the teacher asked you to read from page 32. Then she gave me a quick wink and went back to her seat. It was a small gesture, sure, but it was also everything. I walked home with a goofy smile on my face. I smiled all the way through dinner. That day made all the difference. It was a day that could have been really bad, if not for the kindness of a few cool people. It gave me a shred of confidence. That shred of confidence has continued to grow. Somebody had my back, or a few somebodies. After that, I started hanging out with the cool beans again. How have you been? Get it? How have you been? Not all the time, but sometimes. At lunch, after school, even on the weekends. Throughout all of this, I realized that it's not about how you look or any of that other silly stuff. It's about a wink or a nod or a smile at just the right moment. It's about dusting somebody off, helping them up again, and pointing them in the right direction. Now that's cool. You need a hand? Yes, please. The end. It's science time! Hey there. Remember when we studied states of matter? Solids, liquids, and gases, all that good stuff? Well, you're all experts on that. But how closely have we really looked at liquids? Are all liquids the same? If not, how are they different? Pause the video and discuss with someone in your home. What are some ways liquids are different than one another? Are you back? Unpause me. There, that's more like it. Now, tell us what you talked about. Mm -hmm. Those are good observations. Well, today we are going to look at the density of liquids. Density? Dentist? No! I don't want to go to the dentist! Silly talkie, not dentist, density. Density means how much matter is packed into a substance. Remember when we said everything all around us, including you and me and this half-eaten sandwich is made of matter? Well, liquids are made of matter. But one way we can see what makes liquids different is how the particles of matter packed into the liquid. Are the particles packed in closely together and tight? Are they far apart? The tighter the particles are packed, the denser the liquid is. The farther apart the particles are, the less dense the liquid is. Say this soccer ball represents particles of matter. This box represents one type of liquid. Not much space to move around, eh? What a dense liquid! Are you calling me dense? Not you, Taki. Now, take another liquid. Oh boy. Look at the particles bouncing all over the space. Definitely less dense. Whew, what a relief. I didn't want to be dense. Why is knowing the density of liquids important? Density affects whether objects will float or sink. Think about transportation and how important this is to know when designing things like ships and submarines. Engineers use their knowledge of the density of liquids when planning plumbing systems and dams. Take this bowl of water, for example. A substance with greater density than water will sink. A substance with a lower density will float. Is that right, Taki? Sure is. Almond. And I was wrong about that one. Let's try this. Aha! 
there we go. So how can we compare the densities of different liquids? That's what we're gonna find out uh, right now. You will need these materials for the experiment. Before you start ransacking your house for these items, make sure you ask an adult for help and for permission. Abracadabra. Measure about one third a cup of each ingredient and place them in separate containers. I am going to slowly pour in these six ingredients into this glass container. This way I can compare the different densities of each liquid. You can choose to add food coloring drops to the water, corn syrup, dish soap, and rubbing alcohol containers. This way you can easily see the differences in the liquids in the container. It's Chalky Hypothesis time! Write down your hypothesis. Which liquid do you think will be the most dense? Which liquid do you think is the least dense? And most importantly, make sure to discuss how do you know. Okay, so we are ready to start. First things first, make sure you have all the ingredients that you need. Hopefully you ask permission from your family before taking things. Um, and you will need some sort of glass container so that way you can see the different liquids. Um, I found this at the dollar store for $1, um, so this you can use. And then start with honey first. And Taki wants a front row view. Now, with these stickier liquids, make sure that you carefully pour it down the middle of the container and do not let it touch the sides of the container as you pour or else it will stick to the sides and not create an even layer. Okay, that's honey. Next, pour in your corn syrup. Making sure that this is settled first before I start on the second. Again, taking care to pour do you see the different layers it's light brown right here and the purple is starting to separate into its own layer the corns here well, I'm going to give it a little bit more time before I add the third layer, which is maple syrup. Okay, friends, I'm back with three layers. Would you take a look at that? I have honey, corn syrup, maple syrup, and now I'm ready for dish soap. Now, now that we're done with some of these thicker liquids, we're going to actually start pouring, not from the cups themselves, but using a squeeze bottle. And the reason being is when we put it into the um, container, it needs to go down the sides of the container because if we put it down into the middle, it's just going to disturb the rest of the liquids without fully settling um the more the more runnier liquids now if you don't have a squeeze bottle you should actually probably use a turkey baster um okay so squeeze bottle dish soap and i'm gonna put you down again i don't have enough hands maybe you guys can invent something to give me more hands I think I see a layer forming. Do you? Oh my gosh, so cool. Uh, 
<laughs> Do you hear that sound? It's alive. <laughs> Here's Taki. He needs to be seeing this. Okay, well, I'm gonna let it settle for a bit, but I think you can see the green layer. I'm going to add water. Remember, I'm adding it to the squeeze bottle or turkey baster if you have one. So that way it can go down the sides of your container instead of directly dropping through and disturbing all of those hard work layers. Okay. Okay, see what we got. Guys, how cool is this? One, two, three, four, five layers. On to the next. Vegetable oil. Down you go and rinse this out, put the oil in. I'll be back. Hello, it is I. Ready to put in the vegetable oil into our squeeze bottle. Here we go. All right, time to take an inventory of our layers. Let me see if I can, there we go. Layer one is honey, layer two is corn syrup, layer three is maple syrup, four is dish soap, which is the green liquid, water, and then vegetable oil. For our last magic trick for today, we will add rubbing alcohol. If you do not have rubbing alcohol, or if your family does not want you to use it, you may also use mouthwash. I don't know if you guys can see this, but I did drop a quarter in. And as you can see, it is at the very bottom of all seven layers, which means to me that this quarter is denser than the other liquids. Now, look at the green band, okay? It's very hard to see, and I'll take a picture, but, ah. See that? That is an almond. I dropped it in and it stopped right at the dish liquid layer. Think about what that means. Then I dropped in a ping pong ball and it didn't go even past the vegetable oil liquid layer. So at home experiment, once you make your density liquid tower, Put different objects in there. See how dense they are in relation to the liquids. Here are some examples of other common household liquids that you could use in your experiment. Do you have a science experiment idea that you want featured on our show? Send me an email including any videos or pictures of your experiment. Remember, ask an adult for permission first and for help. Hi everyone, it's me again and Taki! Oh, Taki. Always here when I least expect it. Well, I'm here and I'm here to introduce the post it question of the day. Okay, settle down, Taki. I can't, I'm so excited. I can't wait to hear what you guys have to say. Me too. The post it question is What has been your favorite activity to do at home? Email your responses to me. Please ask an adult to help. My email address is msonogo at cps.edu. Looking forward to hearing from you. Hello there. 
Today I'm going to teach you the cat cow pose. is great for breathing and helps us focus our minds. It also helps remove any tension in our back as we lengthen and stretch our spine. Ah, that tickles! Okay, so the first one is cow pose. What you need to do is set your palms on the ground, make sort of a table, so that way when you someone put something on your back, it is not fall off. You okay, Taki? Remember, safety first. Make sure your knees are in line with your hips and your hands are directly below your shoulders. This is called neutral spine or tabletop position. Then, when you do cow pose, you... Inhale as you drop your belly towards the floor. Lift your chin and gaze up toward the ceiling. So we just did the cow pose. Next, we'll go back to neutral or tabletop position. This time, I want you to pretend you're a cat. Meow. As you exhale, draw your belly to your spine and round your back toward the ceiling, like a cat stretching its back. Exactly like this. Hold for a few seconds, and then release. So you can float your way up to cow and back to cat as many times as you want to. Just make sure that you are breathing evenly. Breathe in deep. Exhale as you go back. Make sure you're breathing and feel your spine start to lengthen. Do you have a workout of the week that you want featured on our show? Record a video of your workout. Remember to ask an adult for permission first and for help. Looking forward to working out with you. Oh, hey there, Taki. What you doing? What? Uh, I'm not doing anything. Don't mind me. Um, okay. Just look kind of interesting just sitting there. Well, if you must know, this is my piggy bank. I kind of am in a dilemma, okay? I have six coins. Okay, can I see the, no, you can't see the coins. You can't see the coins. Okay, all right, all right, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, I have six coins and I know that when I dump them into this piggy bank, the total is gonna be 51 cents. 51 cents, that's a lot. Thanks, I've been saving. Okay, so 51 cents. Well, can I help you put the coins in? Sure, I don't really have thumbs, so I can't pick up the coins. <laughs> All right, let me help you. Here we go. One. Make sure they don't see the coins. Okay. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Whew, what a relief. So, again, six coins equals 51 cents in my piggy bank. Children, I need your help. Please tell me the value of each of the coins in my piggy bank that equals 51 cents. And as an extra challenge, is there more than one way to solve the problem? Thanks for watching. Love, Miss Sonogo. And talking.